Hello, welcome back to my Thoughtful Thursdays video channel where we talk about important topics both inside and outside the church. As always, please make sure that you are subscribed and turn on your notifications below to see videos like these in the future. Today I wanted to talk about transgender people and sports, but I've got to be honest with you. I found out that I'm not fully equipped to speak on this subject after doing a lot of investigation. I have to understand and admit when I am way out of my league, and I am way out of my league on this topic. This week I tried to listen to as many voices and read as many articles of transgender gender people when it comes to sports. I learned a ton. I did this week what I wish more people would do when forming an opinion about something that probably has little effect on them personally. I listened to the very people that it does affect. As I investigated, I was often confused. I often felt sad hearing people's voices. I felt the pain and anguish over this topic and I felt mostly overwhelmed. One of the things that we have to remember is that for me, this is just a topic to talk about. It's philosophy. This is an experiment in using my mind. However, for many people, this isn't just a philosophical talk. This is their life. And that isn't lost on me today as I make this video. One of the many things that I found is that, believe it or not, transgender people and the transgender community is not a monolithic block on this very subject of sports. I think often people think of the LGBTQIA plus people and they assume that they must be one voice and that everybody thinks the exact same thing. But they are not. Specifically on this subject, there is an array of opinions. It is a spectrum. Some transgender people believe that transgender athletes should be able to compete in any sport no matter what at whatever level. For that group of people, hormone levels don't matter and gender reassignment surgery does not matter either. That means that a transgender woman would be able to play and compete in all women's sports. That is on one very end of the spectrum. On the opposite end of the spectrum, some transgender people don't believe that it's right or fair for any transgender person to compete in sports. That isn't just a sole voice that's talking. So to kick things off for this video, what I need you to know is this is not a settled issue even within the transgender community. It is an ongoing conversation and it is a spectrum. Just as there are these two opposing sides, there are also likewise many different areas of gray in the middle. For instance, some are okay if people transitioned before puberty, took puberty blockers, and are on ongoing hormone therapies. In fact, many transgender people are not okay with people making that big decision to transition before puberty. Contrary to the fear mongering that I often hear amongst people, many transgender people are also against gender reassignment surgery at birth before a person can make that decision for themselves. There isn't a monolithic think tank on this one. And what do we do about people that were assigned female at birth by a doctor but actually have XY chromosomes? You lived your entire life as a girl. You love being a girl. You are a girl. You do Girl Scouts, you do gymnastics, you join a sports team, and then one day you are told that you can't can't do sports anymore because your body produces too much testosterone. You must be compassionate for scenarios like this. Surely a sterile blanket statement said with a cold face isn't going to serve us very well here. And I feel like we have to bring up this idea of fear mongering because there is a lot of that going on right now. One of the biggest lies that are told about transgender people is the idea of bathrooms not being safe. We talked about this a couple weeks back. With the way that people talk about bathrooms, it's like people think that transgender people are just waiting around in bathrooms to jump people when they come in. I'm sorry, but that just isn't the case. The truth is, transgender people go into the bathrooms to do precisely what you and I do, to use the bathroom. They maybe glance at themselves in the mirror and give themselves a, hey, how you doing? And it's really cruel and inhumane that people continue to tell these hurtful lies about a beautiful people group. And that lie being that in some way, these people are monsters who are always out to get the innocent. And people who say it, say it with such religious conviction too. And that mentality is gross because as we've talked about before, if anything, transgender people are mostly the victims of violent crimes and not the perpetrators. Now hear me out, could it be the same in sports? Could it be that fear has crept in to taint what is really happening in sports? This fear mongering would lead us to believe that there are just hundreds of thousands of men across the country who aren't very good at their sport. So they want to to claim now to be women so that they can sweep all of the female competition. These top athletes know that they can't compete against other men, so now they want to claim to be women to win all the gold medals. Do we hear ourselves talking? It sounds a little
little bit like the irrational fear mongering around bathrooms. It's based more on someone's mind than an actual reality. Think about it, it is absurd. How many men in your life do you know personally that just couldn't be number one in their sport so they're like, ha I'ma pretend to be a girl now so that I can finally win. This isn't really a thing. Really, you think it is? You think these big macho men are somehow going to start voluntarily taking hormone therapies, lowering their testosterone levels, wearing dresses, that they are going to subject themselves to the harsh words of their peers, the taunting, the bullying, the cat calls, that they are going to become disowned by their family members, called abomination by the religious, all for what? To win a few medals? Have you ever met men? Have you ever played sports? Yet our minds tend to go there when it comes to sports and people say things like this. I just can't believe my poor defenseless innocent daughter is going to have to compete against a man. Well, for one, you just misgendered a person, which is extremely hurtful and unproductive to this conversation. But two, the transgender community is also against this. What we are talking about in this entire video is not a man trying to cheat the system to get ahead by faking that he is a woman. I can't imagine anyone would be okay with that, transgender or cisgender. What we are trying to figure out in this video is how to deal with a woman who is a woman. Remember, transgender women are women. They just happen to be assigned a different gender at birth. I honestly can't think of anyone in my life that would trade their life for the life of a transgender person. Why? because it's hard as hell. Think of the stairs. Think of people constantly sizing you up. Think of people constantly trying to figure you out. People constantly asking you questions about the hardware between your legs. Yet we instantly assume that in every pocket across the country, there are all of these people that want to transition to women just so they can have a better shot at winning a few gold medals. I'm sorry, I'm just not buying that entire story. Are there people out to cheat the system? Yes, absolutely. Fraud happens everywhere. And we diligently make sure to keep people out from committing fraud. Just remember, transgender people don't want fraud either. They don't want someone pretending to be someone that they aren't either. That's kind of what they're living out. Here's the truth, and it's a little bit uncomfortable to say out loud, but it is the truth. There are certain sports where a transgender woman could potentially have an advantage over a cisgender woman, especially if they transitioned after puberty. Trans women who started hormone treatment after puberty potentially could have the advantage of a larger body frame, larger lung capacity and denser bones. Those things could potentially have an advantage in sports. I don't think that that's controversial to say. From most transgender people that I've listened to now, they would say that that absolutely could be the truth as well. Some would say that we still don't have the exact science and data to show just how much of an advantage it might have. That idea in itself isn't controversial. What is controversial is what to do with that information. However, one thing we all must remember is that there are unfair advantages advantages in sports all the time. Look, some people look like Michael Phelps, whose body just happens to be precisely made for the water. For some people who are maybe on a swim team of Michael Phelps back in high school, it was probably an incredibly overshadowing time. Like, why does Michael Phelps get to win all the time? If only I had his ability and God-given body, yet I was stuck with this 5'9 chubby frame and small feet. This was my time to shine in high school, and yet I am competing against Michael Phelps. It isn't fair. He has a genetic advantage over me. Or even think about advantage due to economics. A person with more money might have more access to court time or better gyms, better trainers, or could be in a traveling league, etc. For someone to say that all of a sudden this one thing will upset the level playing field is ignoring the fact that the playing field is not level in the first place. So on one side, we have the truth that potentially in some scenarios, in some sports, a transgender woman might have an advantage over a cisgender woman. I'm not denying that, and I don't think that many transgender people are denying that either. It isn't like a, oh wow, we didn't think of that. However, the inverse of that is equally the same. We don't often hear about transgender males who now have to compete against males. If one is unfair, surely the other must also be just as unfair. But you almost never hear the crowd railing against that. I don't know, I know it's not a scale of equality. It isn't like one thing equals out the other, but it just goes to show 
show you that it's far more complicated when you look at the entire ordeal. And once again, this isn't really happening at the rate that people's fear mongering is suggesting. Now, certainly you'll read about a pair of transgender girls in Connecticut that everyone loves to talk about. That got nationwide attention. But tell me again, where are trans women taking all of these scholarships and opportunities away from other women? Once again, we have to look at the big numbers, just not a few small individual examples. Trans women add to sports. They aren't taking away from it. And the truth is, trans people in general are already at a disadvantage for scholarships. But you know who really is a threat to women's sports? Men and unequal payment and treatment. I'd love to see a Venn diagram of the men who are against trans women competing in sports and the men who don't think that female athletes should be paid the same amount as men. I bet it looks a lot like a circle. Trans women are not the threat to women's sports that we have been led to believe. Now, once again, none of these are solutions for this. It's just a longing for us to get to a place where we can love and support transgender people in our lives and not feel like they are some way a threat to us all the time. How this actually actually works in sports, I haven't a clue. I need smarter people than one Kyle P. Benefield to figure that out. Is it hormone levels and testing? Is it the time of their transition? Is it a separate league? Is it only in certain sports? However, I want to leave with a suggestion for my viewers. Maybe, just maybe, let's not hold on to such a tight position on this one if we don't have at least five transgender people in our lives that we know and love. I think we all know what the cisgender position is on this one. We've heard that for, well, a very long time. But who are the transgender people in your lives that are talking to you about this? Who are the queer people that don't quite fit that binary mold that you are listening to right now? How many of your friends and family members use they and their pronouns? I want us to come to a place of love and compassion. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some really tough decisions that are going to be made on this subject. And let's be honest, some people aren't going to be happy either way. That's how life works. However, can we work to be a world that is full of love, compassion, and empathy? I think that's a great place where we can all start. Friends, that's all the time we have this week. Join me back here next week as we take a look at veterans and healthcare. I'll see you back here next week. Same time, same place.